Hey, welcome into the Shop Fix channel. My name is William Andry, and I'm so glad that you could tune into this week's episode. Today, I want to go over some of the history of woodworking because I find it fascinating. From the first tools of the Stone Age to the more advanced technologies of the Egyptians, we have been advancing our woodworking skills throughout history. I really hope you enjoy this glance of the past, and if you haven't subscribed to the Shop Fix channel, consider subscribing today. The love of woodworking. 8th century BC Gordian furniture is stylized in an abstract manner. Complex symmetry is utilized in inlaid patterns. Two and three dimensional concepts can be transposed and religious symbols can be incorporated into the inlaid designs, attesting to the abilities of the cabinet makers and the seriousness with which the woodworker's craft was regarded. Next are these handcrafted wooden window and door wings from the Turkish culture of the 13th century. I also found this depiction of a Near Eastern woodworker in his shop, which I thought was really interesting. Throughout the medieval period, woodworking tools of all shapes and sizes were being created. In America, woodworking was embraced as woodworking class was prevalent in American schools. Woodworking became a viable career as young men trained in woodworking at the Hampton Institute in Virginia. The Industrial Revolution brought steam mills to the industrialized nations as humans began harvesting lumber at a much faster pace. The business of woodworking was lucrative as companies began to mill lumber and process furniture in much larger quantities for the growing population. Young children continued to be inspired by the creative abilities and the art of woodworking in America as well as other countries around the world such as this school in Norway. Water-powered sawmills such as this one from the 1920s made processing and milling large quantities of lumber a reality. From tree to board, machines like this one made furniture making and home building more accessible. During the 1920s in the Netherlands, clog production was prevalent. Farmers and workers alike sought after clogs to protect their feet during working hours. Clogs are still worn in parts of the world today, especially for farmers, but certainly not as prevalent. Clogs such as the ones crafted in this video are made completely by hand. And contrary to popular belief, it has been said that clogs are much more comfortable to wear than one would imagine. Clogs are made entirely from wood and carved to fit the shape of the foot as shown in this footage. The origin of clogs can actually be traced back to the Netherlands as one of the oldest surviving wooden footwear comes from the Netherlands and dates back to the 13th century. You can see these men loading up their newly crafted clogs onto the wooden wheelbarrow to go sell them on the clog market. Look how happy this gentleman is with his new wooden shoes. In the 1920s, the saw blade sharpening machine sharpened the circular saws in the Jacob Doring Tool Factory in Hagen, Germany. At first, it was driven by a transmission using water power and later by an electric motor. The blade is hooked into the machine and then slowly rotated. The saw teeth touch the grinding wheel and through its rotation, the saw is sharpened. This creates the grinding sounds. The sharpening machine is currently in the possession of the Technology Museum Freudenberg, Germany and is activated for demonstration purposes. One thing that I've noticed is that prior to the economic collapse during the Great Depression, tools and machines were built from solid materials and were not as limited in their construction as new machines are in the current state of capitalism today. Nowadays, machines are produced out of limited resources and are also produced in the way that eases manufacturing. 
This is a very interesting picture as a young girl participates in woodworking class, which was usually regarded as a man's hobby and job during this time period. Meanwhile, to have a greater chance to get a job, youth learn a trade in the central workshop of the Committee for Youth Unemployment in Amsterdam. In the Netherlands, young men produce wooden toys in a toy factory for the upcoming celebration of Santa Claus. The production entails sawing wood, sanding, sawing out wood, spray painting and assembly, and the production of wooden horses on wheels. I really hope you have enjoyed this glance into the woodworking of the past. Coming up soon is real post-World War II footage where anti-invasion poles installed by the Germans are pulled out of the sand, transported, and then repurposed for furniture making. Amazing handcrafted toys. Ready for kids on Christmas. De anti-invasiepalen die door de Duitsers aan het Noordzeestrand zijn aangebracht, worden door kranen weer uit de grond getrokken. Met dit hout is nu nuttiger werk tot stand te brengen. After World War II was over, the anti-invasion structures erected had no purpose anymore. Here you can see the men disassembling the anti-invasion poles on the German beaches and hoisting them onto the vehicles to transport them to the German sawmills. Thousands of these logs are repurposed after World War II ended for furniture making. The palen worden naar houtzagerijen gebracht en tot planken gezaagd. Once the lumber reached the German sawmills, the logs could then be cleaned up and cut into thin planks. After the devastating effects of World War II subsided and economies around the globe regained their footing, industry flourished and worldwide trade boomed. Governments and their representatives oversaw industrial production in their nation and attempted to tap the global economy the best that they could. Further milling and flattening was required for fine furniture making. In the meubelfabrieken ontstaat dan huisraad, waaraan vooral in de getroffen gebieden grote behoefte bestaat. Considering all that happened during World War II, it's actually fascinating how they were able to repurpose these logs and turn it into fine furniture. Hand carvings are a feature of woodworking that never seems to lose its value. Where the Industrial Revolution disrupted the trade of woodworking, handcrafted goods and wood carvings will always have a place in society. Industrial production might have dampened the need for skilled woodworkers, but it inspired others to show the world self-reliance and how to build and do things without big industries. The individuals featured here were a part of a group that devoted themselves to small-scale companies as opposites to multinational corporations. Three decades later, the multinationals have only grown bigger, and the group fighting for self-reliance and craftsmanship has only grown stronger. I don't know where the art of woodworking will go from here, but I do know that the skill of woodworking will be around so long as the trees are producing oxygen. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have fun with your shop fix.